This is the story of two scientists, men who had betrayed the trust and mercy of their professions and who were hunted as criminals. This is the story of one of the greatest ironic twists of fate. I had the feeling I'd seen the man before. A diplomat, a politician, or perhaps just a private citizen. But I had seen him before. The fall isn't the best time of the year to take a vacation, but I had to take mine when it was offered to me. It was to be two weeks of complete quiet and rest. But the way things turned out, I got little of either. must have driven for some hours. Then we stopped at an isolated gas station to fuel up. There'll be 50 minutes stop over. Coffee, sir, inside. Hello, Jack. There's one person you're missing. You see anyone inside? No. Well, I can't wait all day. Tell him to take the next bus. He forgot this briefcase. Where'd yeah. he go? Up to the hotel, I suppose. I secured a room in Belwaz's only hotel. It was small but comfortable. Anything I can do for you? No, no thanks. Uh, what time is dinner? Uh, at six o'clock. Good, fine, thanks. I decided to look through the portfolio in hope of discovering who the owner might be. I would have returned it as soon as possible, but it was Saturday and everything closed at noon. I'd have to wait until Monday morning. I quickly dismissed the letter and the portfolio from my mind. I had planned two solid weeks of fishing, and I couldn't wait to get started.
On Sunday, I received a call from an unexpected visitor. Just a minute. Mr. Powers? Yes. Inspector Bruner from the police. Check everything. What is this? You will find out in due time. Look, what is this? Mr. Powers, there's a few questions I want to ask you. But first I want to warn you that everything you say can be held against you. Hey, yes, I'm fully aware of that, Inspector. Well, now then, when you boarded the bus yesterday, do you notice a man who wearing a dark coat and hat? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. He got off at the first stopover and didn't get back in time. He couldn't. Someone smashed his head in with a rock. You make a good job of it. If I hadn't discovered his identification cards, we could never identify him. Who was he? Axel Baumann. Didn't he work with a man named uh, Hernig? That's right. Hernig lives here in town. Does he? Yes. I got my eye on that fellow. One step in the wrong direction, and out he goes. Right back and has the Allied War Crimes Commission, eh? Where he belongs. Now, back to the business of the bus, Mr. Powers. Who else was on the bus besides yourself? Oh, there were a couple of older ladies, a man with a black mustache, and... Uh, fellow who wore one of those duffel coats. That man in a duffel coat? Could you recognize him if you saw him again? No, I don't think so, Inspector. I didn't really get a good look at his face. Well, that would be all for a moment. Thank you for your help, Mr. Powers. Did you find anything? No. And don't leave the town before notifying me. No, sir. Good day, Mr. Powers. Right, Inspector. Mr. Honig here. No. I have something that belongs to him. Please, come in. Oh, thank you. This belongs to your husband. Where did you find it? On the bus from Mariel. You expect your husband back soon? What's the trouble? I... I don't know when he'll come back. He should have returned with a bus. It's over 24 hours now and, and no word. Did you know that Axel Bauman was also on that bus? Who are you? Oh, that's not important, Mrs. Hennig. But it is important that yesterday I shared a bus with your husband and Axel Bauman. Today your husband is missing and Bauman is dead. Dead? I knew it was going to end this way. I knew it. I knew it. You knew what, Mrs. Hennig? Why do you want to know? What business is that of yours? Who are you, anyway? Get out of here! Get out! Would you rather I call the police? Listen, Mrs. Hennig. If your husband is guilty, there's nothing you can do about it. If he isn't, there's nothing to worry about. He killed Bowman. How do you know? He threatened to. About a week ago, Bowman came to see us. It was the first time since we left Germany. He had a proposition. Don't you remember the old promise we made? When we crossed that border, we agreed never to see each other again. Did I tell you, Hurley? This is important. The only thing I consider important is my security. Your presence here threatens it. Try to understand, Hurley. We've got six years of experimentation behind us. Six years. Don't you think it's worth something to learn what we know? What we know? They knew already. With animals, yes. But not with human beings. 
They'd pay a fortune to know exactly what temperatures and pressure the different organs of the body can endure. Remember, a guinea pig only tells half the story. The risk is too high. They wouldn't do it. Just because we're now living quietly in a neutral country, it doesn't erase the fact that we were murderers. People don't forget so soon. And they haven't forgiven. There are those who place profit above morals. I'm sure they would be interested. What could you offer? We burned all the reports on our tests before coming here. I didn't burn them. Axel, I've had years to look back over what we had done. And I'll tell you something. I don't like what I've seen. I'm not going. And you aren't either. You can't stop me. Most of these tests are mine. I want them back. And if I don't give them to you? Then I'll kill you. A little more coffee for Axel, dear. And he did. Was the meeting on the bus between your husband and Bauman prearranged? Yes. Bauman was probably afraid my husband would make good his threat to kill him. So he planned to meet him on the bus to return the reports. It was the safest place he could think of. And you think Bauman changed his mind at the last moment and your husband killed him? Yes. He killed Bauman to ease his conscience. Yeah. Well, uh... I'm sorry, Mrs. Hennig. I just wanted to return this briefcase. I don't mean to upset you, but you'd better be prepared for the fact that if your husband did kill Bauman, they'll get him. And now, to return to the second part of Foreign Intrigue. I told you it wasn't Hernick. Then who was it? I don't know, Inspector. I never saw him before. He would have killed you if it hadn't been for Sergeant Pullman. Yeah, I appreciate your thoroughness. Why didn't you tell me that Hernick was on the bus? That the briefcase was his. Well, it didn't occur to me until after you left, Inspector. You could have phoned me. Or didn't you think I was able to handle this case of myself? Of course I did. Well, Mr. Powell, let me remind you that withholding information from the law is a very serious thing. Punishable by one to three years in prison. Well, now, look, Inspector, I had no intention of withholding any information. I, uh, I just wanted the story. A story? Yes, I'm a newspaper man. Associated News. Well, you didn't tell me that this morning. Well, you didn't ask me. That's right, I didn't. But you should have told me anyway. You should work with me, not against me. Good day, Mr. Power. Good day, Inspector. I had decided to write the story off and leave Bellwise. The police would find Hernick eventually, and that would be the end. One murderer kills another. And then? I saw the man who had hit me outside Hunig's apartment. This is the best.
best proposition I got from them. And they are willing to pay a good price for the test reports. But for the time being, they can't use your services. That's not my offer. If they want my reports, I go along with it. I can't avoid the police in this village much longer. But they are not looking for you. They think you're dead. And Hernish is alive. That can't last much longer. They said there is a way they take you. How? Plastic surgery. What? They suggest it's plastic surgery. Same, change your face. It would get you over the border and no one would ever know you weren't killed by Hernish. Plastic surgery. Yeah. That would do it, wouldn't it? That would be the end of Axel Bauman. No chance meetings, no worries. I'd be free, Kurt, free. But we need a good one, a specialist. Dr. Corvell is still at the sanatorium. Yes, he's perfect. But will he do it? Yes, sir, I've spoken to him already. And? It will be expensive. No, it doesn't matter. It will be worth it. What about the American? As long as they think I am dead and hurting the murder, then we don't have to worry about the American. Aren't there any matches here? Well, there's a pack in the bedroom. I I'll get it for him. Thanks. Please. Axel Baumann. Didn't I read somewhere that he was killed? Murdered. Mr. Powers here thinks otherwise, Dr. Covell. I saw Baumann this afternoon, Doctor, with his friend. The friend said that you had agreed to perform plastic surgery on Baumann's face. That I agreed to perform plastic? You're certain, he said, Covell? Positive. It would be impossible for many reasons, Mr. Powers. For one. Baumann was my direct superior during the war. He forced me to perform operations that the Nazis commanded. I am a peaceful man. But if I ever had Baumann on an operating table, I think I would kill him. I'm sorry we trouble you, Doctor. I'm sure that Mr. Powers make a mistake. We all make mistakes, Inspector. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. Are you coming, Mr. Powers? Yes, I'm coming. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. than I do for any of my patients. How long would the whole affair take? Two, three months. It will depend on how much crafting is necessary. When can we start? Whenever you're ready. One other point, Doctor. If you should try something extraordinary with me, Kurt will be with us at all times. I understand that. When I returned to my room, I found a telegram. It was from the Paris office. Canceling all assignments, fly immediately to Ankara, cover oil lease negotiations. The assignment had come at just the wrong time. I wanted to stay on until I could prove what I had seen, but I had no proof to offer, and that's what counted. Axel Bauman was free, and the way things looked, there was nothing that could be done about it.
The events of the next few months kept me flying back and forth between Paris, the Near East, and points all over the European continent, following one story after another. But the memory of Axel Bauman kept burning in my mind. However, it was several months later before I could arrange to get back to Belwise. Have a look at my face, Doctor. In another two or three days, the scar tissue healed nicely. The American newspaper man is back. How do you know? He just arrived on the bus from Arielde. He's on his way here. Then I got to get away from here. We leave for Germany immediately. With the bandages? Without the bandages. You can remove them in the car on the way to the border, Doctor. It's risky. You've got to do it. All right. Get his coat. It must be him. Stall him. Tell him I've left town three days ago. I'd like to see Dr. Corbell, please. He isn't in. He went away a few days ago. Uh, when do you expect him back? I don't know. Do you know where he went? I don't know. I think you do. You're lying for him, aren't you? Now look, the police are after him and I want to know where he is. Where did he go? To the border. Inspector, this is Mike Powers. Look, if you want to prove the bombman's alive, you better get to the border right away. Well, well, have you come back to start this business over again? Listen, I didn't come all the way from Ankara just to pull some journalistic stunt. If you don't get bombing now, you never will. All right, all right. Where are you now? I will pick you up. At the sanitarium. And hurry. Your car. Right here. We have to hurry. Sit over here while I take that bandage off. I've arranged with somebody to take care of you on the other side. That's fine, Doctor. What do you think, Doctor? What about? My face. Will it pass? Perfectly. It's better. In the emergency, he is here with the police. Hurry. Just a minute. Here's your passport. Hurry. Stop him! Wait, let him go. Are you insane? Do what I say. Let him go. They're waiting for him. I'll take care of him. I'm Major Clare, Allied War Commission. We have been waiting a long time for you, Hönig. Hönig? Kurfeld, you dirty double-crosser. Transforming his face to look like Hönig was my revenge. 